Hi friends, this is Manoj and I'm a data scientist. So in this particular video, we are going to have a very interesting discussion on the very two new trending programming languages that is the Python as well as the Scala, right? Now in the recent times, many might have heard of these two programming languages in the field of machine learning and AI, right? That is the Python as well as the Scala programming language, wherein these both these programming languages got super duper hypes and now many of them are very very confused that hey now i want to make a career transition so since both these programming languages are in the top trending ones which should i be opting for right this this is the one of the most commonly asked question among the people across the globe now who want to make a career transition right so having said that here are a few of the key points that we have listed wherein we'll go through both the programming languages in and out and we'll try and uh, add the weights accordingly okay so let's get started with the python now python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language now high level general purpose programming language basically states that the syntax written for this python programming language is a human understandable one typically because machine only understands binary right zeros and ones so that is machine level what happens in case of high level is nothing but there's common english terminologies that are being used and what we humans can understand and the general purpose programming basically states that the python is not only meant or it is not only bounded for machine learning data science and all things but also you can use python programming for some software development application development website development so on so forth it is python provides you wide spectrum of ranges wide spectrum of platforms wherein you can implement it right you can use this for the development and production units coming to the scala scala is also one of the high level general purpose programming language that provides user or the programmers with some interesting concepts of object oriented programming as well as the functional programming of course our python does python does supports the same even python supports object oriented programming as well as functional programming both do both of them do support object oriented and functional programming okay but scala was typically designed for uh, java virtual machines now uh, virtual machine itself is a very core concept i will not dive deep into it but i am going to give a very very high level definition of what a jvm is so in order to execute some of the java codes or the code snippets that are written in java we need this java virtual machines okay so scala was typically designed for this jvms that is java virtual machines so scala was typically appeared uh, on january of 2004 so it is a very recent one very recent application whereas in case of python it was typically developed in late 1980s and the first version of python was released in 1991 and it was named with the tag of python 0.9.0 and of course python became super duper popular in early 2010s right now this was all about the historical and the origin of these two programming languages that is python as well as scala now let's view this programming language from the aspect of machine learning and data science right because that is what we are in the biggest confusion that that puzzle minded thing right so let's get started with python itself python has comparatively less number of lines of codes remember python does not have a fixed structure of programming right and it uses typically less number of lines of code and it is dynamically typed i'll come to that dynamically typed in a while scala has a strong support for statistic typing so statistic or static typing or statistically typed is nothing but okay let's take up an instance for example i want to define a variable let's say float b is equal to 3.14 okay so what i'm saying i'm having a variable with the name b that holds the value 3.14 and is of data type float right we are predefining some of the things we are predefining it but in case of python what happens is i need not have to predefine some of this stating that this is a floating this is an integer this is a character this is a string no i need not have to do that python interpreter by default will itself assign these things so that is what is meant by dynamically typed okay so you need not have to worry about this float you can simply go and start writing b is equal to 3.142 and python interpreter does 
understand that this is a floating point and i will be assigning this data type of float okay so that is what difference between statistically typed and dynamically typed cool okay let's go ahead scala provides jang language or interoperability with java so any code that that are written on scala can also be executed in java and vice versa so there is a language interoperability with java with respect to scala but what i'm saying in case of python is python you need not have to worry about any other things if you want to define something uh, let's say if you want to define your own functionalities you can define it from scratch you can build those models from scratch without even depending on something else right you can you can literally construct all those models from scratch now coming to the scala scala has its own structure there is a pre defined structure that we have to follow while coding with scala right so that might become a very complex for a fresher or a beginner in case of python what happens is you there is no proper structure or there is no pre defined structure right there is no pre defined structure in case of python this reduces this complexity and python's efficiency is being very very increased and python also provides a lot of flexibility right because there is no pre defined structure that you have to write it in this way right it is not it is not saying you you have to code it or you have to write this snippet of code in such a manner it is giving you full fledged flexibility cool so coming to the scala what happens here is there is a low memory management now when you want to deploy the new code okay now we want to deploy the new code now what you have to do is you have to restart the running the process so any running processes that are being executed in scala you will have to restart them again when you are going to deploy the code so what happens at this point of time this increases the memory load on your system right so that is what there is a low level memory management but in case of python memory management is done dynamically so user need not have to worry about the memory management python interpreter does this implicitly okay cool then scala is easy to integrate with apache spark now we all know as it is a useful tool for handling big data and some developing some of the machine learning models we need this apache spark right so what happens in case of python is python codes are typically smaller and the readability of the codes are very high okay so these are some of the key points that differentiate both python as well as scala right so that's it for today thank you